Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge Podcast, episode number 253. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Follow me at the Sky Lounge on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Podcasts, and also check out at the Sky Lounge on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And without any further ado, let's get shit started with episode number 253, the pretend projection to postulate parody, untitled, rant, untethered, ego flies freely. Let me just take out the goddamn sunglasses and talk to you motherfuckers. <sighs> real honest, real quick. I just got done with watching game six in the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs uh, with the Vegas Golden Knights taking on the Vancouver Canucks. And while the Vancouver Canucks were down in the series, three to one, they have won back-to-back -back games in games five and six and will be playing a game seven Friday night against the Vegas Golden Knights. Who have been magnificently choking on ice. Let me take the goddamn headphones off. How the fuck are you going to blow another fucking 3-1 series lane? How do you go 0 for 5 on the fucking power play? Shout out to Vancouver Canucks goaltender Thatcher Demko. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant performance from him in back-to-back -back games of game five and six, only allowing one goal on goddamn 40, what, 43 in game five, if I'm not mistaken. I actually have notes here, Kit, so we can actually refer to this in our note-taking here, where in game five, here, here's the fucking notes, kids. I got all the goddamn numbers for you. There you go. So... In game five, Thatcher Demko, 42 saves on 43 shots. And in game fucking six, 48 saves on 48 shots, motherfuckers. So Thatcher Demko with 90 saves. This motherfucker had 90 saves with one goal allowed. Oh, this fucking Vegas Golden Knights team is an absolute shit show at times. And they happen to shit themselves at the worst time possible. It isn't just regular shit. It isn't diarrhea. It's dysentery. It's fucking dysentery. These mentally fucking fragile entitled pricks. Are you holding the political thing against them? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm actually not. Because relatively speaking to the woke league of Chinese basketball, the NHL has been pretty you know, mellow about the goddamn social justice shit. But holy fuck, this is purely on the game itself. The series itself. Where I look at this fake... This fucking mentally fragile team and I think how the fuck are you motherfuckers favorites for the Stanley Cup how the fuck are you at all a fucking favorite in this in this goddamn bubble how you can't score on a fucking power play just go back to the Chicago series they had a horrendous time trying to score on the fucking power play now they're continuing the trend against the Vancouver Canucks. Now, I swear to God, man, if they fucking blow a 3-1 series lead tomorrow, Friday, game seven, I'll lose my shit. I'll lose my fucking shit. I really am, man. That review video is going to be, like, mild when it comes out, but prepare yourselves if the Knights lose because I am going to lose my fucking mind. And you know what? To mellow ourselves out, we got the right solution for this shit. You fucking asshats can't fucking score on anything. 
You can't buy a fucking goal to save your fucking life. And this has been happening all throughout the season, by the way. All throughout the season. Oh, Vegas is one of the best on the power plays. When? When were they? I love when NBCSN and big, you know, media hockey talks always say, oh, Vegas is actually one of the best in the power play. They're actually decent on the penalty kill, but their power play is absolutely atrocious. Just because you can fucking pass the puck 30 goddamn times before attempting a shot is something to be fancied at? Get the fuck out of here. What the Vegas Golden Knights have shown me is that, I mean, A, hockey is all about momentum, especially in the playoffs, and the Vancouver Canucks have got momentum on their side in stride. It is absolutely phenomenal what the Vancouver Canucks are doing. And B, dude, when you see mental fragility and when you see confidence break down, it's visible as shit. That energy is palpable. And you can read it, even from a TV screen. By the second period of this game six, I'm losing my goddamn mind because I already know the Vegas Golden Knights are going to lose in a shutout. I actually wrote it on the fucking note-taking during game six. Can't lie about that shit. I got actual proof. You want, you want me to you want me fucking pop that shit off? All right, here we go. So this is an entire fucking review. Right. Well, actually, these are all the fucking reviews for the playoffs for the Vegas Golden Knights in the bubble so far. And so this is game six. Right. And for those of you who's just listening to this, by the way, I'm actually showing off this whole note taking uh, papers where I just write down what's happening during the game. And by the second period of this game, as you will clearly see on the video, if I can actually just focus that up here real quick. Anyways, if I can, I can't, I can't. Oh, there we go. Boom. Why does it feel like Thatcher Demko is going to get that shut up? Early 2-0 feels. Can't even lie about that. I actually wrote that down. And to me, by that second period... It goes from anger to just, you know, reluctant acceptance. It's good lord, dude. How do you try to blow another fucking 3-1 series lead again? I know game seven is tomorrow. I know it's not over yet. But how do you just break down so hard like that? Pardon me. Actually looks at Uncle Peter De Pablo, you know, head coach Peter DeBoer. I think, dude, you've actually helped the Vegas Golden Knights come out of the hump a little bit during the regular season. And throughout a lot of these playoffs, I mean, you've made the team look really nice. Especially on, uh, you know, certain parts of uh, special teams like, you know, the penalty kill unit. But man, like, how do you not adjust shit? How do you not adjust shit? Like, realizing the fourth line is getting burnt the fuck out by that top-heavy fucking first line in the Vancouver Canucks. How the fuck, after game five, in which I thought Robin Lehner couldn't look mediocre, and potentially, if you do have a game seven... You could play Flurry, who you have quote unquote less confidence in, and he can actually try to steal the show. Yet your stubbornness kept Robin Lehner in there. I'm not saying Robin Lehner played bad in game six at all. I'm not saying that because I thought Robin Lehner did pretty well for the bullshit that he had to go through, which was the Vegas Golden Knights offense and defense completely laying an egg. And I swear to God, Vegas is about to become a meme. Did the Golden Knights fail epically in Game 7, a la 2019? They are going to become a fucking forever meme in the NHL.
I can guarantee you that shit. We'll actually be one of them, Vegas Golden Knights fans, the part of the NHL cycle of self-hating fucking fandom. <laughs> We're nearly there. We're nearly there. Yeah, I don't know. Just get this feeling, Vancouver. Can do some epic shit. You know the Vancouver Canucks? If you took that at minus uh, one and a half reverse puck line, the payout was immense, plus 550. I was actually debating that shit today. I am not kidding. I was at the casino and thinking, dude, I have a general rule of thumb with betting. I do not bet on my own teams. I've done it, I've done it maybe once in my life. Never again. Because it just feels weird. Feels like I'm, if I lose, you know, I'm losing money and, you know, I feel worse about my team. But if I, you know, win off of a loss, it, it feels like a scummy move. So I just don't do it. But plus 550, dude, if you put fucking 100 bucks in there, oh my God, man, that payout would have been awesome. Hindsight is 2020, motherfucker. It is. The only thing Vegas can do is just play well for Game 7. Dude, I am so fucking livid about the whole Vegas Golden Knights thing. This was my post-game review press conference style of rant. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> my hockey TED Talk. Holy fuck. You're a goddamn ramble machine. Yeah, dude, I ramble a lot. You get me to talk about anything, I, I will drill on for a while. I will. But I actually, I actually did that in, in full stride earlier this afternoon where on Instagram at the Sky Lounge, same fucking thing, boys and girls, if you want to check that out. On Instagram, we went live and I, had, I went ahead and did about like a 55-minute impromptu kind of a live video where I just talk random shit, no script, like l legit no script. Unlike these fucking podcasts where I have some semblance of a script going, like this fucking 253 script. Like It, it is just basic words, but it, it, it's still technically a script, right? So with the Instagram live, I, I did none of that shit and it was just purely just me rambling, which... Sometimes I like to do, kids. I do. God damn it, man. This hockey game got me all fucked up right now. Got me all, it got me all kinds of fucked up right now, man. Because I, I'll tell you what. At the end of the day, hockey is just a sport. And sports is only one very tiny aspect of the entirety that is life. But emotionally, right? This isn't the logical t shit talking anymore. Emotionally, irrationally, it fucks with you. And so, that's why I need this breather, man. This is why we had to do the untitled rant instead of a more formalized version. Because your boy's just trying to wind down for the bullshit. You know what else I, I do nowadays to wind down from the bullshit? Listen to fucking President Trump talk and then any goddamn rallies or pressers. They're genuinely fun and interesting to watch. And he was actually in uh, Latrobe, Pennsylvania and spoke for about like an hour and 40 minutes. You know, full speech. Man had his fucking faculties. I mean, he is just killing it with the fucking one-liners. And I, admittedly, there are some, I'll say boomer jokes, <laughs> that just doesn't land. It's like, ah, <laughs> dude, just uh, <laughs> you're trying a little too hard with that joke, or you're trying a little too hard with that one. But overall, I am just impressed with that man's energy, just his 
relentless push for uh, self-betterment in America and for individual Americans. And I ask you, can Rapey McNightmare Joe do that for you? I don't fucking think so. Joe, Joe Biden is one of those fucking frail weak looking motherfuckers and are, is actually a weak human being kind of a piece of shit scumbag human being to be fair all those goddamn demon crats in the obama administration they make me ill because when when i watch president trump when i see him do his shit i feel empowered i feel invigorated i feel like okay cool that's a leader that knows how to get his citizens, his common folk, <laughs> shall we say, to feel like one of the fucking elites, one of one of his dudes. And I think that's the fucking point these Democrats are completely missing. That Trump is more like a next door neighbor who's just trying to solve all the fucking bullshit and drainage in the swamp that is known as DC. Yet the media keeps fucking painting this guy like he is the zombified second coming of Adolf Hitler with Stalin, you know, Stalin blood and to, to fucking for extra good measure. We'll put, uh, Ivan the terrible's blood straight into his penis. And it's like, Whoa, whoa, mainstream media, calm the fuck down. That that's a little bit overboard. He's not that fucking bad, but they'll they'll insist. They'll keep insisting. And their demon crat heroes are people to fucking look up to, like Nancy Pelosi. Jesus fucking Christ. Nancy Pelosi. Nancy! Guess what, bitch? Your hair looks just as terrible. With or without the blowout. With or it just looks terrible. You look terrible. You look like a leather skinned Voldemort bitch. Nancy Pelosi, anytime you open your fucking mouth, all I all I see is just vomit, tar, jizz, blood, and lies. This bitch, Nancy Pelosi. Okay? Gets caught on tape, flat out caught on tape, going out into public within her fucking district, right? San Fran, California, if I'm not mistaken. This bitch goes out, gets her hair blown out, and then when she gets caught red-handed on the fucking tapes, she puts the fucking salon owner under the bus. What the fuck is wrong with you? This bitch says, I was set up. Nancy, you weren't set up. You set up the appointment to get there, but you weren't set up, bitch. You are a lying cunt. And you are emblematic of everything wrong with the Democrats. You are just a fucking surface level fucker. I know that shit. Based on research, based on observation of behaviors and sociopathic lies just coming out your mouth, Nancy. What the fuck is wrong with you, bitch? What in the fuck is wrong with you, Nancy Pelosi? You're a goddamn scumbag. I swear to God, man, California produces some of the scummiest fucking politicians. This one piece of shit in California, a senator, is basically pushing the state to accept pedophilia. This sick piece of shit. And you can actually look this up. It's called SB 145. This piece of shit will lower penalties for adults who have sexual relations with minors. What the fuck is fucking wrong with you it's people like you 
It's people like this piece of shit California senator that condones pedophilia, that allows this shit to be accepted social behavior. These are the pieces of shit that you should allow chemical castration. You should absolutely allow the worst fucking things to happen to these people. How in the fuck is this acceptable? How are the California Democrats okay with any of this shit? How do we not hear a fucking peep from mainstream media about, I don't know, one of the fucking biggest states in the country trying to openly support pedophilia? What the fuck is wrong with you people? Like, your horrendous secrets are becoming clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. And man, that Durham report, it just keeps churning out more goodies. And that bitch Maxwell, pff, I think she's singing like a bird. What mainstream media also fails to mention is all these cages that federal agents are finding of trafficked children. You know, I have to mention to people, I'm not really crazy about kids. At this age, I'm 28 years old. I'm a bit of a reckless young blood in a sense, right? And I know I'm not ready for a kid. And, you know, with children, I'm, I'm a bit awkward. But I know, I know damn well, I would never mess with a child. Never. That's a child, man. That is... The most sacred, innocent, has nothing to do with the world's bullshit child. Now, some children are annoying. Some children are brash. And some children are, are dare I say, dumb. But they're children. They, they just came out of this world a couple of years ago. What the fuck have they done? Like, how, why? Who? <laughs> Who the fuck in their right mind thinks it's okay to mess with children? Who? Like, why? How the fuck does that process in your fucking head? And with California pushing, pushing shit like SB 145, you really have to start questioning these fucking politicians. You really have to start looking into these fucking parties where these people are okay with this shit. A party that where Nancy Pelosi is okay to parade around in a fucking private hair salon meeting and then puts them under the bus. But none of you regular folks can go out there and do shit because these overlords tell you. These overzealous, insane, communist wannabe dictators are trying to fucking control your goddamn lies, control the goddamn narratives of what you're getting through the media, and you are not opening your eyes you are not waking up and it's absolutely insane as somebody who doesn't like kids is telling you to save the children make this more fucking known do your research please please this motherfucker i told you all the time right told you a while back part of deck can't vote can't vote not a citizen can't vote and you know what? I would not, you know, jump through the hoops of terms of illegality. I actually dropped my fucking blunt here is why I'm looking, uh, you know, below. But whatever, that shit has gone and lost. But, you know, because I can't vote, because the whole, uh, that guy shit, I wouldn't go through any weird, uh, you know, fucking route of illegality to, you know, vote and do some. None of that shit. No, like, I just want, I'm going to. Be an observer because that's all I can do at this point. But as an observer, what they fucking, you know, functioning brain, eyes, ears, voice, you know, body, you know, all, all this working shit. I feel like I can just say my shit. And if that shit is save the children, do your fucking research. QAnon isn't a just magical conspiracy theory nonsense. Start with save the children and go down the rabbit hole with me and realize that these fucking pieces of shit are flipping you off in real life because you are blind. I'm telling you, motherfuckers, SB 145 is one of the most disgusting things I've 
ever heard in my fucking life. And California is a fucking shithole. I mean, I knew it already was, but my God, you let these fucking politicians run amok in your fucking cities and state. And then you have the fucking nerve to blame Trump on that shit. Literal fucking pedophiles are trying to govern the state of California into utter chaos and recklessness. Oh, and oh, guess what? Governor Newsom, if you can't pay your fucking goddamn water bill, we're going to shut that shit off. Fuck you, you goddamn peasant. Get the fuck out. Is that, is that the morally right thing here? Is that the fucking left-wing agenda that everyone keeps praising about with Biden and crazy cunt Kamala? KKK, crazy cunt Kamala. You people drive me fucking insane. You fucking demon crap worshippers. And I'm not even gonna fucking hide the pretenses anymore. They're goddamn demon crats. Do you know what they do with children, kids? Go down that fucking rabbit hole, by the way. Yeah. Pizzagate. Peter Wood. Ellen DeGeneres. Tom Hanks. Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. Check those fucking names. You'll be shocked what you find. Especially if you're a Hollywood media consumer. Like a heavy fucking obese consumer of that shit. Like I was. You will be fucking shocked how prevalent this fucking problem is. Conspiracy theory. Explain the missing children, bitch. Get so fucking pissed off. I do. I do. Shit like this gets me upset. Because when you realize that there are human beings that can succumb to their lowest, primitive, most deranged desires, and they flaunt it openly, it, it, it. I think for people who mess with children and rapists, and all those sexual assaulters. A guy like Jacob Blake. You should massage the Eighth Amendment of cruel and unusual punishment and allow for chemical castration for these absolute pieces of shit who prey on the young, the innocent, or the vulnerable. There is no room on this earth for you animals. There just isn't. Whether you're a senator trying to push a bill to accept pedophiles or you're a petty criminal scum who rapes people and then mainstream media praises you, you get a fucking free bonus money of a million dollars. Ah, this clown world makes me so fucking sick. And you sheeps are... <laughs> you sheeps are stuck in that shit. <laughs> the Ted with Bozeman was amazing. Hollywood's great. You're praising pedophiles, dude. <laughs> you're, you're, you're falling in love with pedophiles, dude. Don't do that. <laughs> you're only gonna fucking hate yourself for it. Sports is the nice reprieve. It is, man. You read all this insane shit and watch some sports to, you know, kind of calm down and relax. And you realize your team can't close out a 3-1 series lead and three other 3-1 series are now all going into Game 7. Bar from the one series that ended in 4-1 because Tampa Bay actually knew how to close out. Mm. That kind of shit slaps me back into reality because ugh, <laughs> escapism didn't work. Ugh. What do I do? 
Oh, you actually got video games. So, hey, there you go. Like I said, man, I mean, the, you know, sports is a very small aspect of life. And you, know, you try to find enjoyment in anything and everything else. But like I said, man, if, if you're one of those scumbags who support these piece of shit senators from California or Nancy Pelosi or rapey McNightmare Joe or crazy cunt Kamala triple K's, I, I can't. I can't with you. I can't because you're, you're part of that fucking clown world, man. Because ultimately, kids, clown world has been activated. And if you can't clear your mind, you are not going to see what is actually happening. That's some true shit. But on the next episode of the Sky Lounge, we're going to go ahead and go back into the world of sports. Hooray! Yeah! Sports ball updates on the next episode. Kids, all right. All right, motherfuckers, I appreciate you dropping by this episode. Follow me at the Sky Lounge on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Podcasts. And also check out the Sky Lounge on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And until next time, kids, fuck off.